I'm trying to write a song, Aurelia, and it's just not coming to me. Oh, well, maybe I could help. I used to be a famous actress and singer. Listen to this. La, 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 la. That's pretty good. That's really pretty good. Maybe you can help. After all, the song's about you, you know. Me? Yeah. You're writing a song about me? Yeah. Well, a song about me must be charming and, and beautiful to listen to. Can I sing it? Well, that's the problem. It's not finished. Mm. Let me sing you what I have, though. All right, all right. Aurelia looks after Pinwheel House And the folks who live there, one and all She's caring and loving and patient and wise Yes? Go on. Go on. Go on. Uh, that's... That's all I have. Oh. You need a last line. That's exactly what I need. Hmm. A good last line. Last line. Last line. Maybe... Let me think about that. Uh, think of last... Ah! I know what? I'll consult my crystal ball. That's it. That always helps in a pinch. Now, let me see. That would be the inspiration number. That's where I know. What number do I call... Let's see, I can never remember that number. Two, four, seven, one, five, six, no. Crystal it's ball! Crystal, crystal ball. Crystal ball! Jake, would you please be quiet? I'm trying That's it. to consult my crystal Thanks, ball. Thanks, Aurelia. What? What? Crystal ball! That's the last line. You think so? You sing the song and I'll sing the last line, okay? Well, all right. Aurelia looks after Pinwheel House and the folks who live there one and all. She's caring and loving and patient and wise. And she sees the world through her crystal ball. Oh, Jake! Jake, that's wonderful! Oh, that's just marvelous! She's caring and loving and patient and wise And she sees the world through a crystal ball <laughs> Busy bees buzzing on the honey go Gathering nectar and bringing it home Got to have honey for the baby bees With a lot left over for you and me It's work, work, work for the old queen bee She never sleeps like you and me Lays her eggs all night and day Queen bees don't have time to play But the little girl, he never leaves He keeps house for the other bees See him there, he's the biggest bee I like the drone cause he don't sting me <laughs> The worker bees fly around the field Gathering nectar that the flowers yield Pollen sticks to the worker's feet And he takes it home for the rest to eat <laughs>
Latino Bernardo, you hear that? Our big moment has arrived. Road or no road, everyone's coming to our meadow. Yes, Bernard, that sound lifts my spirit. A good foot and a half. The sound has power. Horse power. Symphony, Bernard! A symphony! Some symphony. Now I come in on lead fender. Let me not crumple your style, Barney. We have state-of-the-art instruments for the big sound. With this little wonder, we'll out-noise them. Pardon me if I seem to stereo. The more the melodia, press on. Where's the first platter? What do we spin first? Here it is, the main sound of our time. <laughs> Give it a great ride, Barney boy. Could be, honey lad. You also. Now this. What can I say? Only a human could do that. Hmm, but there's room for our sound, too. Maybe they could learn to love it. Mean this? A Carlsbad wafer, our old spa, the music of the colonnades. Makes me feel faint, Bernardino. I'm just a sentimental old timer. We regret the momentary loss of sound quality. Barney? Now it's my turn. I don't care for jockeys. <laughs> what they're doing. Uh, setting up their tents. Wrong! They're scoffing. Still don't have eating machines, so they're momentarily quiet. Let's give them a little anaclina kind of nosh music. Tempo will surprise them. While technology is tacit, a few sweet bars from the past. First one, their solos.
tell you, it's inhuman to be human. Without wings, they had to invent them. Without radios, they can't hear. Without cameras, they can't see. Poor guy. Used to walk, flop on the grass, and we buzz for them. Today, a few steps, and their feet hurt. Hear that? It's going home to rest. Didn't even notice us. Maestro, one, two, three. Oh, if he could only hear us, he'd come back and buy food. To be or not to be, don't fumble the question. Oh no! What happened? I thought it was daylight. I... What's this? I... Oh! Look at this! This is unhealthy for moles and other living creatures. Who could have done this? Oh my! You wouldn't want to make a mess like this. A mole could get sick. Oh! Oh no! No, I have to clean it up before I go on my walk. Oh, well. You go watch the movie. I'm forever cleaning up these parks and playgrounds. Please help me. Bye. Oh, here we go. The faster I clean it, the faster I can play. In Professor Balthazar's town, as everywhere in the world, there were bees and beehives, and of course, a beekeeper whom the bees adored. The beekeeper was called Frank. He loved the bees and loved the honey which they produced so generously. However, Balthazar's town, like every other town, was slowly filling up with cars. Even car factories started springing up. And then, spare parts factories. And then, spare parts factories for the spare parts. And before anyone was fully aware of what was happening, the formerly lovely town was grey and dirty. The people somehow managed to go on living in spite of these horrors. But not the plant. What little the bees managed to gather tasted like petroleum and not like honey. When finally the bees began fainting on the job, Frank gathered up the hives and sadly left the town forever. Thank you.
During this time, Professor Balthazar had been so preoccupied with his inventions that he hadn't even noticed what was happening. And when he got a postcard from Frank, he thought that he was merely away on his summer holiday. Now, even though the bees were very happy up in the mountains, Frank most definitely was not. Neither the fresh air nor the excellent honey could lift the pall of sadness which had depressed him ever since he had left Professor Balthazar's town to live in strange surroundings. It was only when the other townspeople asked him to help that Professor Balthazar discovered what had happened. He thought, and thought, and thought, and then he had the solution. invented the smoggy X, which swallowed up the fog and smoke in the town. And from the waste matter it collected, a gas was produced with which the townspeople filled their cigarette lighters. The fruit trees blossomed once again. But something was still wrong. There was no fruit. Fruit became something people only remembered. But no matter how longingly they remembered it, there was simply no fresh fruit to be had. Even the professor was a bit confused at first. But then he realized what the problem was. There were no bees. So who was to pollinate the flowers? He wrote to Frank asking him to come back since, after all, the town was now clean again. A celebration was prepared in Professor Balthazar's town for Frank's return. And when he reappeared with all of his bees, there was general rejoicing. That summer, the townspeople enjoyed the smell of flowers once again. The bees found what they were looking for, and everyone knew that fresh fruit would soon again be available. Pinwheel House, it's time for your favorite game and mine. Yes, yes, the mystery fruit. Yay! Oh boy, I can't wait. I Are you know. ready, veggies? Yes, yes I'm ready. ready. Okay, okay, all right, ready. here comes the oh, first yeah. clue. Okay, we're all here. I'm Chris 
and I'm crunchy and I grow on trees. Yes, I make wonderful like pies and I'm as saucy as you please. Ooh, that's Who am I? Hmm. Make saucy pies? Saucy? Hmm. Sauce. <gasps> I've got it. Apple sauce. And apple pies. Apples are the mystery fruit. Right? Absolutely yeah, yeah. right. That's the correct answer. Apples is the right answer. You're so smart. Oh, 
sound boxes, the rooster. Someone put little apples in my sound box. put little apples in all of my sound boxes. Oh, oh, oh careful, Jake, careful. Molly. It took me five long years to collect all those delicious mouth-watering, tummy-warming crab apples. Crab apples? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, do I love crab apples. They're so wonderfully sour. And you know they're perfect for baking crab apple tarts. Molly... Hmm. Are all these crab apples yours? They sure are. All oh, 500 of them. 500 crab apples. Yeah. Molly, they're all stuffed in my sound boxes, and now the sounds can't get out. <laughs> sound boxes? <laughs> what a silly waste of crab apple space. These are crab apple boxes. Every one of them, yep. Molly, hmm. these are sound boxes. Crab apple boxes. Mm -mm. Sound boxes. Apple boxes, Jake. Sound boxes, Molly. Apple. Sound. Apple. Sound. Apple. Sound. Apple. Sound. Apple. Sound. Oh. All right. I know when my crab apples aren't wanted. I'll just take all... Five hundred crab apples and drag them back to my tiny little mole hole in the ground. Oh, my house is so chock full of crab apples. There's no room for a mole to sit down, Jake. So what if apples keep falling on me when I sleep? So what if they hit me in the head? Boink, boink, boink. So what if when I'm trying to dream, they bounce off my tummy? Give me a tummy ache, you know. So what if I'll slip on the floor and I'll break a toe? All right, Molly, all right. Yeah? I think I have a solution. Oh, good, I knew you'd see it my way, my boy. <laughs> right here. Yeah? I have a big box which I have yet to put a sound in. Oh, boy, that's a big box. Yeah. Oh. Plenty of space for yeah. your crab apples. Right. So we can... Smart guy. <laughs> we can put all your crab apples in oh. this box. Oh, goody, goody. Is that good? Make you happy. Oh, that makes me wonderfully happy, Jake. <laughs> mm. uh, oh, boy. Thanks, Mom. Okay, start it. Okay. Come on, dump them in. 
nuts and I'll Take watch all right those here. delicious Ooh. little rosy cheeked apples. Dump them right oh. in. Ah. Oh, boy. Now I can listen to one of my favorite sounds. What's that? The rooster right here. Uh, that's a nice sound, Jay. That's a good one. You know what my favorite sound is? What's that? The sound of someone biting into a nice, juicy, mouth-watering sour crab apple. Oh. Especially if that someone is me. Yeah? yeah. Well, in that case. Yes? Here you go. Oh, boy. Oh, thanks, Jake. <sighs> Time for another. I'm a fast eater. <laughs> Pinwheel will be back after these messages. If you like building blocks or know someone who does, you're going to want these. The Flexi Blocks, the blocks that move. Only Flexi Blocks have this patented design to make every block move. Not just one or two special pieces. Because Flexi Blocks move, any project is more fun and exciting. Dinosaurs grab, cars race, bulldozers roll. You can even make things to wear. Flexi Blocks have won four major awards for excellence. Now, with the special Factory Direct TV offer, you get all these pieces. Satisfaction guaranteed. Order your Flexi Blocks now and get this storage tail. Start building like never before with Flexi Blocks, the blocks that move. Order your Flexi Blocks now for $19.95 plus $4 shipping and handling. Call 1 800 662 1400 or write Flexi Blocks, P.O. Box 7140, Berkeley, California 94707. This is a special Factory Direct TV offer, so order now. Sorry, no COD. Call 1 800 662 1400 and get Flexi Blocks, the blocks that move. Has this ever happened to you? What a mess. This shirt and blouse have had it. Or have they? Now, there's a simple way to deal with the most difficult stains. DD7, a super concentrated formula that removes stains but won't harm fabrics. Now, where's the ink? Delicate silk? Incredibly clean. Tar, iodine, blood, rust. DD7 gets rid of them all. Dull gray window shears restored to like new whiteness thanks to a soak in DD7. Imagine this is your washing machine. Dye from a red sock. Ink. Iodine. A little DD7 and goodbye to unwanted stains. Order DD7 today for $14.95 or we'll double your order for $5 more. That's two tubes for $19.95. Have your credit card ready and order now. Use your credit card and call toll free 1-800-327-8000. Or send fourteen ninety five or two for nineteen ninety five plus four dollars shipping to DD seven box twelve hundred Scarsdale New York one zero five eight three. You're watching Nick Jr. and now back to Pinwheel. Thank you. 
This is Hattie Town, where all the people live in hats. This is Sancho, who enjoys helping Milko to deliver his milk whenever he possibly can. And this is Carrots, who is Sancho's very special friend. Today's story is called Mustafa the Hedgehog. Now see here, Wimple, King Ethelbert was saying, I will not have all these upsets in the town. That hedgehog has got to go. Ever since he came to Hattie Town, he's done nothing but make a nuisance of himself. I quite agree, Your Majesty, said Mr. Wimple. But how do we catch him? He slips through our fingers every time we find him. That's your job, said His Majesty. You cannot expect me, the King of Hattieland, to solve all your problems for you. Ouch! Oh, my goodness me! There he goes! Catch him! Oh, oh my goodness me! <laughs> Ah, Mrs. Bagwash, my good lady, cried Mr. Wimple. Have you by any chance seen a rascally hedgehog scurry by? No, I'm afraid I haven't, your most worshipfulness, said Mrs. Bagwash. What does he look like? Well, he looks like, well, a hedgehog, stammered Mr. Wimple. No, I definitely haven't seen him, said Mrs. Bagwash. Not if he looks like a hedgehog. Mr. Wimple appeared a little confused and hurried on. No, said Mrs. Bagwash. I have definitely not seen a hedgehog pass by. <coughs> Ouch! Oh, Mr. Wimple! Uh, oh, my dearie me! <laughs> Ah, Posty, my good fellow, <laughs> said Mr. Wimple. Have you by any chance seen a rascally hedgehog scurry by? No, I'm afraid I haven't, your worship, said Posty. What's his name? Well, his name is uh, Mustafa, but he answers to Musty, said Mr. Wimple. No, I definitely haven't seen him, said Posty. Not a hedgehog named Mustafa. Mr. Wimple hurried on. No, said Posty. I have definitely not seen a hedgehog named Mustafa pass by. Hmm. Ouch! Mr. Wimple! Well, I never did. <laughs> Ah, Milko, my good man, said Mr. Wimple. Have you, by any chance, seen a rascally hedgehog scurry by? Ah, uh, no, I'm afraid I haven't, your worship, said Milko. Uh, was he a very old hedgehog? Well, uh, no, I don't think so. In fact, I'm sure he's a very young one, said Mr. Wimple. No, I definitely haven't seen him, said Milko. Not a young hedgehog. Mr. Wimple hurried on. No, said Milko. I have definitely not seen a young hedgehog pass by. Ouch! Uh, Mr. Wimple! Oh, well, blow me down. <laughs> Not so fast, my young friend, said Sancho. And where do you think you're off to in such a hurry? Oh, please don't stop me, cried Musty. Mr. Wimple is after me, and if he catches me, he's going to make me leave Hattie Town because he says I'm a lazy rascal and always causing a nuisance. Ah, at last, panted Mr. Wimple. Please don't send Musty away pleaded Carrots. 
I'm sure he doesn't mean to be a nuisance. It doesn't matter whether he means to be a nuisance or not, gasped the mayor. The fact is that he is a nuisance, a prickly nuisance, and King Ethelbert says he must go. But hedgehogs are very useful, cried Sancho. Useful, bellowed Mr. Wimble. They're a positive nuisance. If you give Carrots and me a chance, we'll prove to you how useful Musty is, cried Sancho. Hmm. Very well, very well, said Mr. Wimple. No one can ever accuse me of being unfair. If by the end of the day no fewer than three Hattie Town citizens have reported to me how useful Musty has been to them, I shall plead with His Majesty to allow him to stay. Otherwise, he must go. Carrots, my good friend, said Sancho. We must think. Ideas always come to you when you don't really need them. And when you do need them, they never come. So it was with Sancho and Carrots. Mr. Wimple would definitely send Musty away unless they could think of several uses to which a tiny hedgehog could be put. And though they thought and thought, not one idea could they think of. We'd better go for a walk. Perhaps that will help us to think of something, suggested Sancho. Bobby was busily sweeping up leaves in his garden. Tidying up as usual, asked Sancho. As usual, you've said it, moaned Bobby. I just don't know where all these dead leaves come from. I think the wind blows every dead leaf it can find into my garden. The more I clear up, the more I find. At least the leaves give someone a lot of fun observed Sancho. Well, if it isn't that nuisance of a hedgehog, said Bobby, he'll scatter all those leaves even further. We must stop him. No, just a moment, said Sancho. Look. <laughs> there you are, said Sancho. See how useful Musty is. If you ask him nicely to roll about in your garden every now and again, he'll clear up your leaves beautifully for you. So he will, murmured Bobby in surprise. How very useful. Please tell Mr. Wimple how useful Musty will be to you, urged Sancho. Then he won't be sent away for being such a nuisance sometimes. I shall certainly put a good word in for him, said Bobby. <laughs> Still hard at work as usual? asked Sancho. As usual, you've said it, moaned Posty. No sooner have I finished my round of delivering letters and parcels when I have to go out again with an urgent telegram for King Ethelbert. If only I had a messenger boy to save my tired old legs. Sancho suddenly had an idea. I'm sure Musty would like to deliver your telegram for you, he said. Musty? Hmm, that nuisance of a hedgehog. How would he carry it then? Asked Posty, not at all sure about the wisdom of Sancho's suggestion. Off you go, Musty, cried Sancho. King Ethelbert, as fast as you can. How very useful. Please tell Mr. Wimble how useful Musty will be to you, urged Sancho. Then he won't be sent away for being such a nuisance sometimes. I shall certainly put a good word in for him, said Posty. When Musty arrived at the palace, he found William asleep, as usual, although he was supposed to be wide awake on sentry duty. Musty nudged him. Ouch! cried William, as one of Musty's spines stuck into him. And what have we here? said King Ethelbert. Hmm, I see you have your uses after all. Not only can you deliver urgent telegrams, you can also wake up lazy guards who fall asleep 
while on sentry duty. I must have a word with Mr. Wimple about you and see if we can't let you stay, even though you can be a nuisance sometimes. Very soon, Musty found more and more useful things to do. He even rolled over Farmer Oatfield's fields, making little holes in the ground with his spines. Holes which were just right for the seeds which Farmer Oatfield sowed every year. In fact, Musty became so very busy, he had no time left at all to make a nuisance of himself anymore. Boy, that was great! If you like that sort of thing. Again, the mouse on Morris was longing for company. It would be really ridiculous if I couldn't find a friend somewhere. float away, the mouse asked. These are dream balloons, the old man said. I send them to the children on Earth so that they can have pleasant dreams. The mouse thought how marvelous it would be to drift up into the air with the balloons. Maybe it would make him lighter and smaller. You know, your balloons might get lost without someone watching them, said the mouse. I never thought of that. Perhaps you should hold on to them. I'd be very grateful. <laughs> the old man was grinning to himself. He knew, of course, what was on our mouse's mind. When he drifts up higher and higher, thought the old man, the mouse might get smaller, and I know that's what he wants. <laughs> in fact, while drifting up in the sky, the mouse met a sad little cloud, and then he became so small that the cloud didn't notice him. <laughs> Why are you crying, asked the mouse. The tears are falling onto Earth, and Mars is rain, and it's flooded enough. I can't help weeping, explained the cloud. They have all left me, and I'm so lonely. <laughs> and once again, the cloud sent warm showers down below. Well, I'll keep you company. I don't like to be alone either. <laughs> the flow of tears stopped at once, 
We could play together, the cloud exclaimed happily. And my goodness, what fun they had. It had been a long time since the mouse had had so much fun, and he got very tired. And the little cloud carried the sleeping mouse and his dream balloons back to Earth safely and tenderly. While the sleeping mouse was dreaming about his adventures with the cloud, he let the balloon slip away. And on this very night, all the children of Earth dreamed about the big mouse on Mars and his friend, the little cloud. Please, boys, quiet down in there. People are trying to sleep. Oh, oh well. Good night, minus. Good night, plus. See you in my dreams, Plus. See you in my dreams, Minor. Plus, I, I think oh. we're in a dream. What a wonderful dream. Yeah. <gasps> Look at that shooting star over there. Where? Over there. Where? Over there. Where? Got you last. <laughs> I got you last. I, I got you last. No, 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 no. I got you last. I got you last. No, I got you last. I got you last. I got you last. I got you last.